Welcome to Best Bites Forever. Today I'm making these Asian inspired crab cakes. If you're not a subscriber, now's the time. Also go ahead and click that like button and let's rock it out. I want to start off here by making a really quick dipping sauce. So what I have here is a quarter cup of mayonnaise and I'm going to make like a ginger lime dipping sauce. So I just want to go ahead and shave off. Actually, I'm going to cut that just so it's flat move that over here and I just want to like super shave off some edges of this ginger. I only need a tiny little bit because ginger is very potent so obviously if I put too much I don't want it to like overpower and over ginger because I am going to also put some ginger into the crab cakes. I'm just going to really finely dice that up like so. Maybe even go over it one more little time here and this is going to go right into this mayonnaise. I also want to give it a little bit of lime because as you may or may not know, my Asian influences come from a couple different places. One of them is my Thai stepmother. So to me, the lime is kind of normal in Asian cooking because I'm used to that kind of kefir lime taste, which my husband does not love. But anyway, I'm just going to add a teeny little bit of lime zest into this. We're going to have this really lovely ginger lime dipping sauce, which is going to go right on top of my crab cakes. So I just want to stir that in really nicely and put it over to the side. That's going to kind of give the flavors a chance to mesh around in there and do a little taste test. Still tastes like mayonnaise, but don't worry it won't. Actually I think I'm going to wash my hands real quick and then I'm going to add a little bit more. So here I'm going to go ahead and add just one more little sliver of the ginger in there and just a teeny bit more lime zest. It's kind of hard to judge sometimes like you have to be careful because you know the flavor will definitely get stronger as it sits but I couldn't really taste it at all so I'm going to go ahead and add a little more and I'm kind of making this up as I go along just so you know guys but obviously I only share stuff that comes out wonderful so I have about a teaspoon of the ginger in there so far. I'm going to do just a little bit more lime zest. You know what, I might also go ahead and add a little squeeze of lime juice, so let's just cut a little bit of that guy off of there. Give a little lime juice squeeze, why not? A little bit of lime zest, so we probably did about a, I don't know, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of lime zest, maybe a half of a teaspoon of the lime juice, and probably a teaspoon of ginger. And one more quick little taste test, I think we're going to be happy here. Oh yeah. That's great. That's gorgeous. I'm going to put it over to the side so that the flavors can develop and I'm going to move right on into my crab cakes. Okay, here in this bowl I'm going to combine my mayonnaise. So here I have two tablespoons of mayonnaise. I'm also going to add in two eggs. And then I have a teaspoon of wasabi. A teaspoon of soy sauce. And I'm just going to stir all that together kind of till it's, you know, a nice like combined consistency. You can use a whisk if you want, but really the spatula is going to do just fine. No big deal. Okay, so that is ready. I'm going to set this over to the side for just a minute. So I want to go ahead and move on to the rest of it. This is going to be for the crab. So I want to put a little bit of ginger. I'm going to do a couple of this little slices here of this guy. I'm slicing this kind of thin here. So like so. And then into french fries, like really tiny skinny french fries though. Get those guys sliced up, nice little pile, turn them to the side, and then just run your knife over them again so that you're getting like this kind of situation. So it's like a teeny tiny little dice. Okay, let me finish chopping those real quick. And let's call that, what do you think, tablespoon. Let's say a tablespoon of ginger. I'm going to move this just kind of the corner of my cutting board for now. I want to cut up my shallot. I'll probably use this whole thing because I don't want any of it to go to waste. So I just have my little peeling bag. I have a bag over here to the side that I put all of my little scraps and peels into. Of course, if it's anything that my tortoise will like, I save it for him so he gets any kind of, you know, cucumber ends or like pepper ends or anything like that because he loves them. Pull the peel off of there. 
go ahead and pull the peel off of here. Okay, so once your shallot is peeled, you just want to kind of go this way first so that you get the smaller little slices. Then this direction, same thing that we did with our ginger, then this direction. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with the other side as well. This is what I'm getting. While I am chopping, I'm going to go ahead and cut up some of these green onions. These are going to end up being the garnish, so they're not actually going to go in, which normally my rule is that if they're not in there, I don't use them for garnish. But in this particular case, I feel like they go with, you know, what I'm making and they would definitely would go in there, but I'm just not putting them in there and putting them on the side. So I cut these at a nice little angle, so you kind of get these like you know, sharp looking kind of longer pieces. A little bit prettier for a plate up. These are going to go over here on the edge of my cutting board until I'm ready to use them. And I also want to cut up just one piece of garlic and this is a pretty tiny little piece of garlic. This is going to go into my crab cakes. So I use the back of my knife first. If you go over it like that first, it almost minces it up for you. So just kind of do that. You can see that's pretty much minced already but if you just take your knife back over it again and then the other way like bam you have minced up garlic super super simple I'm gonna add this in with my shallots so this is my crab meat and I buy this at Costco it's like a fresh lump of crab meat and you have to pick through it though the other day I picked through about the first half because I was making something else and I didn't find any shells but generally I find at least two so what you basically want to do is just put it onto a plate or whatever you want to use but just kind of feel it for anything hard inside of there sometimes there's little bits of cartilage or little bits of shell that you need to get out because obviously you don't want to feed anybody those things so I just kind of quickly pick through it one of the restaurants that I worked in, this was like my job. Like when I first, first got out of culinary school, I had to pick through crab meat. So kind of goes fast. So here's my crab meat. It's all nice and picked through. I'm going to go ahead and just move this over here and go back to, this was our mayonnaise stuff combination, you remember? So this crab meat is going right on in there. You're going to see this come together really beautifully. I'm also adding in a half of a cup of panko. Those are Japanese breadcrumbs, if you don't know. And I'm just gonna give that a tiny little stir. Don't mix it all the way in yet. We don't need to, because we have other stuff to add. Okay, I'm also adding in, remember we have this ginger, shallot, garlic situation going on here. So that's all going in there. And this is looking really, really good. That panko is gonna kind of absorb some of the liquid what you want to do is get this stirred up and then kind of patty it out and let it sit for like 10 minutes because it's going to give the panko a chance to absorb the excess liquid and that's going to help your crab cakes stay together when you start cooking them. Of course the egg is a binder too and I use two eggs. You might be able to get away with one but these are eggs out of my backyard from my little chickens and they don't lay like super huge eggs. They're very close to what's in the grocery so I don't know put one in and kind of check out the consistency but it won't hurt if you do too you know like you're not going to over bind or anything. But you can kind of see how this is like already wanting to stick to itself. See just doing that it kind of holds together. Okay so what you can do at this point is you can take a little piece of this and fry it if you want to check it for seasonings. I'm not going to, I'm just kind of going to go for it and I'm going to add maybe another half of a teaspoon of kosher salt and a little bit of black pepper. The soy sauce is going to give it a little bit of saltiness which is why I kind of, you know, held back on the salt just a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and hand mix that because I put my gloves on and it's easier at this point. If you look underneath what I am mixing here, I have a sheet pan and my sheet pan has some aluminum foil on it. That is just solely for easy cleanup because I don't want to have to scrub my sheet pan. I hate doing dishes, you guys. All right, so this is nice and mixed up. It's gorgeous. It's holding on to itself. I'm loving it. I'm going to go ahead and make my little crab patties. So you can kind of decide how big that you want them to be. You know what I'm actually going to do is, let me show you how I do this. Okay, put it all together, do, 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 right? Okay, cut it in half so that you have two separate pieces, right? Because you want to come out fairly even, right? So I have two, cut them in half, right? 
So now you have four. So now I'm thinking each of these will cut in half and that'll give me fairly even. I should come out with about eight. So here is my first one. I'm gonna give it a little roll in my hands. Something jumped out there, a little pat down. I like to kind of make my edges nice. So, you know, let me show you another option just to show you also. Hang on one second. Up. So if you want to be kind of like OCD about the shape, you can get a little cutter and put it down and just put your meat in there and mash it. Mash, 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 mash. Try to get it as even as you can and then pull it up. So you have like a nice perfectly, oh, looks like you got it at the store, right? But you didn't, you made it at home because you're awesome. So I guess I might as well make them all pretty since I went ahead and started. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and then we will fry them up. So as I'm doing this, it kind of occurred to me that I don't think I gave you the crab measurement. So I used eight ounces of crab meat in this. It was actually nine ounces, but we're gonna call it eight because you know, it's like a good round, good round number, eight ounces, a half a pound, right? I was using what was left from when I made crab chilaquiles the other day. If you didn't see that recipe, I'll leave a link down below and you can make those and then you can make these with your leftover crab, which is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding these into the pan. They have been sitting for 10 minutes and I'm using my bench knife to kind of pick them up and move them. You know, that guy isn't sizzling. I'm gonna wait a minute to add the next one. You know what though, while I'm waiting that minute, I am gonna go ahead and add one to the middle. Cause I know it's nice and hot right there. I just kind of scoop under these and lift them up with this. It makes it a lot easier. Love my bench knife. If you don't have one, just let you know they're really a great kitchen tool. Yeah, this is, I'm kind of picking them up with my hands a little bit too. That seems to be working out as well. I don't want to overcrowd these. I mean, I only have two left though. You know, I feel like I'm in a dilemma here. Do I want to put the last ones? I kind of do. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to, ooh, got to wait for them. All right. Well, I have one left. We're going to go like three to four minutes. They should start to come unstuck and then we know they're ready to flip. So just a little side note here, can you hear the sizzle? And you see the bubbles right here? This is exactly how you want it to be. You don't want to see any smoke coming off of the oil. You know, you don't want like furious, angry bubbles that are making noises like, you know, angry. So right here is right where you want it. Again, probably three to four minutes. Okay, so I'm ready to go ahead and give one of these a little flip. You can see he is released from the pan. Ooh. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful color that I got over here on this side. It smells amazing. I think that we have something awesome going on. He's still kind of sticking, so I'm going to leave him. They'll kind of let go of the pan. Like, see, he let go pretty good. He has a nice clean break there. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm going to pick on this dude again. So, I'm going to go another three to four minutes when they start to let go of the pan and they get this beautiful color on the other side along with that nice crispiness then I'm gonna go ahead and remove them from the pan so I just want to show you this dude he's ready to come off of here look I'm gonna flip him onto him oh it looks so good don't they there it is gorgeous 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 so let me show you my plate up 